Wiles up and welcome back guys to the Wiles Up podcast. Very great to have you guys back here. I know it's the off season, but we're not done yet. We've got a lot of things to get through and uh, very privileged to have a special guest on uh, this evening. Someone that I've uh, grown to, to admire and, and watch and especially from a New Zealand uh, rugby league perspective, someone that's taken the space of refereeing uh, to a new level for a lot of us. So it's great to have her on this podcast. Uh, Rochelle Tamarua, thank you very much for coming. How are you doing? Oh, kia ora, kia ora koutou katoa toa, te roa korerika. Um, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, it's, it's a great opportunity to get on this podcast, uh, Waz Up podcast, uh, <laughs> to be very frank. Um, I'm really excited to share my experience um, and just to share my whakaro about um, how refereeing has helped or kind of moulded me into the woman that I am today. So thank you very much for having me on tonight. Oh, today, sorry. Thank you very much for, for having us, uh, for being on here. And it's great to hear Te Reo um, Kuki uh, mm-hmm. I know Te Reo Māori, but it's beautiful to hear both languages. Uh, you fluent <laughs> in both to start off? Or you... uh, the Cook Islands. So, yeah. Okay. Well, we can, you know, we can, that's why we can speak, but the same language, so I understand both. Yeah. Oh, that's good, eh? Yeah, best of both worlds, I suppose. Uh, for me, I, I, I kind of understand a little bit of it. Katoa <laughs> toa, it sounded like a little bit of a, a Māori kind of thing there, but... Uh, now, very great to have you on, guys, and we're going to get into a lot of uh, Rochelle's uh, bio, her her, uh, her career and the pathways, and so we're going to get into that soon, but firstly, the big event, uh, the NRLW Grand Final that you were a uh, touch judge in, tell us about that experience, how was it for you, um, was that the biggest crowd maybe you've you've, you've been a yeah. referee yet? Yeah, absolutely, uh, so the week before, I was very honoured to run the semi-line the semi-final line for the Knights uh, versus Broncos, and that was 13,000. And I'm like, wow, this is huge. It sounded like an NRL an NRL semi-final. Uh, so yep. we get to the grand final, it's 40,000 people. <laughs> and so the atmosphere was electric. I took in a moment to, you know, look around and go, oh, my gosh, we're here. Um, just the appointment itself, I, I never expected it. I got to round nine of refereeing my last game. I'm like, right, I'm done. I'm ready for preseason. Um, but obviously things were planned uh, for me to go to the to the final. And so, yeah, it was an enjoyable occasion. I had my parents fly over from Auckland. Awesome. Um, so that was that was very special to, you know, to get the grand final appointment, to be the first uh, New Zealander. Uh, yeah. So obviously we had Henry Pedernara who represented yeah. us in refereeing uh, at the NRL top. Uh, but, you know, to be the first for a grand final appointment and to have my my family there oh it's incredible so i really enjoyed it mm. you're a trailblazer and, and you know it's 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 great to have someone like yourself setting a an example for other people that um you know may in the future become a referee or be involved in rugby league so that was that was truly awesome now did you get a chance i suppose to watch hang around afterwards and maybe watch the grand final between um the panthers and the broncos and what were you what were your thoughts on that game for how good how good is rugby league? Rugby yes. league is just yes. taking over the you know the globe. Um, you know, I'll talk about the Warriors a little bit. You know, they did really well this whole season, and not only for the team, not only for um, New Zealand in itself, but for our rugby league. You know, we have union yep. fans. We had I don't know baseball, netball people. You know. <laughs> People just come together. So that's what the Warriors were able to do was bring the nation together and enjoy rugby league. Now, you get to the grand final, mate, that's like 80,000 people. And it was electric again. It was just huge. It was very hot. It was like 37 degrees. But we're sitting in the stand embracing the moment. Now, it was probably one of the best games I've ever sat and watched. Yeah, just and and that weather, how how was it? Uh, working in that type of environment, I suppose you're probably used to the Cook Islands um, weather, but uh, you felt like you're probably back on the islands uh, working in that heat. Uh, well, you know, moving here has been uh, difficult. Trying to, you know, climatize, mm. I'm still struggling. So 37 degrees, 36 is is far hot. You know, Auckland, <laughs> we're very lucky to get it past 18 degrees. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I thought we'd have a drinks break, but apparently didn't uh, meet the threshold. So we carried on. So cop I. Um, but yeah, it was it was a, an experience to run through that heat. Uh, it's only just going to get worse during the preseason. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, something for me to work on. 
Well, I saw maybe I think you were on the shaded side. I'm not sure if that helped a lot. But <laughs> there was a, I saw the other guy on the other side. Oh, you poor dude, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we swap. Uh, oh, just swap. Uh, okay. Yeah, got to swap. <laughs> Yeah, I, I asked bro. I said, bro, is it alright if I can stay on the shaded side? Can of your I side? stay on the. Sh- nah, bro, you get on this side. Yeah, <laughs> get, get over, bro. Oh, I've had enough. I've done my forty. You do the <laughs> yeah. last forty. No, nah, very cool. Um, yeah, oh, it was just amazing experience from my point of view as well. Watching it, it was uh, unbelievable. The theatre, the drama, you just can't beat rugby league. And like you said, great to have everyone on board, especially the um, you know the up the wires train. Everyone's back home at least yeah. is is really on to it. So no, nah, very very cool. I wanted now to just track into your career path and especially growing up um now to lead it to where you are what were some important parts of your your growing up you know in, in New Zealand that led you to becoming I suppose a referee and and doing what you're doing right now yeah so I started refereeing touch football back in Greyland uh, Hoon Bay when I was 10 oh. so it was something that I really enjoyed. My father's a referee, touch football referee too. So I just, you know, follow him around and he'll go to rugby league and I'll, you know, again, follow him and see what he was doing in the weekend. And I asked dad, I'm like, should I ref? And he goes, well, up to you. Uh, so from that day on, I never looked back. Uh, there was a lot of, I'd say, a lot of times where I kind of questioned, was refereeing rugby league for me? Um, you know, being a male-dominated sport, Um, woman in league wasn't as strong as it is now Um, and just going through the going through emotions uh, going through upsets disappointments but just to have that resilience behind you and I always believed if you've got a goal you you don't stop at anything regardless and that's created the character and the person that I am today Uh, there was five years of it you know having to I don't say compete but, yeah, friendly competition between myself and my colleagues back at home. Um, and it was hard. It was hard at times uh, trying yep. to understand, you know, certain appointments. And, you know, that's just how it is in, in yep. the sport, you know. Um, but just being able to have people and family um, surround me and, you know, go through that journey with me, yeah, obviously helped me um, continue with the dream that I am living today. Awesome. Mm. I think that's a common trait for a lot of people in any field of work that you do is to persevere and there will be trials and difficulties that we all face. So, you know, it's nothing new and, um, and it's just great to see that you've pers- persevered through that and, mm. and carry that on. And so, again, just setting that example for others. Um, but it's cool to, to know that, you know, you kind of through your dad's um, pathway, yeah. you kind of got into rugby league. Now, in terms of a, a, a characteristics, if there was a unique traits or, or characteristics that a referee needs, what are some of those traits or characteristics that, that will help them become a, a good referee? Ooh, definitely patience. Uh, so being able to, you know, just go through it and not setting high expectations for yourselves. So cool. for me, I go on a weekly basis. I get the appointments with what I have on that week and I just make sure that I do the mahi on that week and I don't worry about other factors outside of it or future appointments Um, but then also um, being able to adapt uh, to you know to changes to things that might not go your way you know things aren't you know life isn't easy life isn't you know and if it was you know would be where we wanted to be straight away Uh, but for me I just being able to adapt to the different culture here too was hard for yep. me, but I managed to get there. Um, and then just, yeah, just working with, you know, my managers and my, my close counterparts have been just, you know, been really good for me. Mm. Yeah, cool, cool. Um, I, I suppose, you know, I was thinking, you know, traits, obviously you need to be quite firm and direct, I suppose, would oh, be yeah. Yeah. In, in, the, in, in that space well, too. But, yeah, I never thought about patience and adaptability. You always yeah. think of referees as being – so very uh, rigid <laughs> from the outside, yeah. you know, but you don't realize how much hard work they're doing to kind of adapt and, and work behind the scenes. I suppose that's something we don't appreciate yeah. the fan watching the game, yeah. how much detail well, you say, guys are putting you know, in. You've got to be like 10 foot tall and bulletproof. Yes. And a saying, yeah, yeah, you could say that, but um, the work, the work behind that to get there, you know, yeah. to be rigid or be, to, to be thick skin, you know, thick there's skin, a lot a, of yeah, money to go uh, to get there. Right. Yeah. Mm. No. Yeah. Absolutely. Bang on there. I suppose even you know going back before you moved to Aussie and, and 
especially I, I, you were an ARL referees development manager. Did you always see yourself getting into a leadership space and, and especially working in, in the ARL? How was that and kind of helping young referees come through? No, I, I didn't see myself uh, have the leadership role that I had back at Auckland. Now, when I did get the opportunity to do so, I was like, we're going to change things. You know, yeah. we, we need to have a lot of uh, youth. We need to have a lot more uh, Māori, Pacifica, um people in the officiating uh, circle. Now, if you have a look at the stats, NRL, NRLW, Q Cup, uh, New South Wales, all the players, or most of them, are uh, Polynesian and Māori. Now, why wouldn't that be the same for officiating? So to do that, I'm like, you know what, let me do this at Auckland Rugby League. Let me go through, you know, nurturing, educating, upskilling our referees in our club space and, you know, probably create a pathway for them if they wish to do so. And so yep. when I did that back at Auckland, to leave Auckland Rugby League, especially the way that I kind of left it, oh, I was heartbroken yeah. But I was really excited for the opportunities that presented here at uh, Queensland Rugby League. So, yeah, that was that was my baby, I could say. <laughs> yeah, I, I was watching you on YouTube. I looked up some and I uh, saw you and you did your interview. <laughs> but I could tell I could tell that you were very – that was your baby. You know, that was That's your my thing. Baby. My passion, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, that was your you cre- it looked like you created it, you know, you you found you know, you nurtured it. Uh, I even saw you mm-hmm. you you saw one of the refs and you were acknowledging him that, or it was a young yeah. person you know, and yeah. how, just say, Hey, that was a good job. Okay, maybe yeah. you missed it, but that's fine, you know, like that type of encouragement. That's real real cool. I, yeah. I really enjoyed that little video from the from the ARL. Yeah. <laughs> 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 No, no. All good. Sorry, I'm just doing a bit of uh, research. If you, if you don't want. No, to I was go. like, oh, that YouTube video that kept playing on repeat on the Wednesday oh, night footy. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I said to my boss then, Vigo, he's a he's a, another uh, league referee, and I said, bro, who signed this off? Because I didn't. <laughs> oh yeah, you need to get royalties per play, man. What's that? Um. <laughs> but it was, it was yeah. good to showcase, you know, that um, you know, there is definitely pathways in the officiating yep. um circle but you just need the right person to drive it behind it so yeah yep. I, I felt that me being my personality and and whatnot kind of created that space for our refs mm. absolutely now for you i suppose we all know that when there needs to be a transition in life or when we've reached kind of the max of whatever it is that we're doing how did you know that it was time for you to go to move to australia and what a great part time. What a great <laughs> question. Um, when I went over to the UK to referee at the World Cup, yep. um, you know, I've created good relationships with the, the people that referee in the NRL and I just sat down and one day I was like, you know, I'm here. This is the biggest, you know, um, tournament, I'd say, uh, that I've at- attended. And then to go back home, what's there? You know, yeah. with my personal development, where am I going? Um, and unfortunately, there was no where to go. And so yeah. to um, persevere and go forward with my refereeing career was to make the biggest decision and to move over to Queensland. And yeah. because we've, you know, there's a lot of resources. We've got people in high places that are more than willing to educate, upskill our referees where we are at the moment. And then, you know, just to have the resources, like little things like training fields. We didn't yeah. have that back at home, you know. So I'm very grateful for the opportunity to move over, and that's that was when I decided, no, we got to go. And I just felt in, in my gut, yeah. it's either going to go two ways: whether it works out or not, I can always come back home, or I make the commitment fully, and then make sure that it, you know, it works out. And it's been four months, and it's been great. Mm. Awesome. And I suppose the, I mean, obviously you're refereeing on a weekly basis. The volume of work you're doing. How how have you adapted to that to that volume? That, that oh, right of... <laughs> I thought when I came to Queensland, I'm like, you know what, they're just gonna coast me. I'm gonna you know, sneak <laughs> my way in. Oh nah. I'm on the plane to Townsville to watch, you know, Belinda Sharp referee the um, New South Wales versus Queensland. I'm back watching the Suncorp Stadium game and I'm yep. like, Oh no. Two weeks after that, I'm in R L W. So I'm travelling everywhere and wow very very grateful for the experience because i've met so many people along the way it's yeah it's been full on and i'm slowly 
on the come downs now, so it's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just kind of got easing off a little bit. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's cool. Uh, well, while we're there, are, are you are you going to be doing any of the women's games coming up? The Pacific Championship? You're going to be involved in any of that? Um, we're not quite sure. Uh, we I... just, I mean, we just wait until we we're, we're caught up. Mm. Okay. Well, maybe that's a good point to talk about the weekly cycle of it. Um, when, like, just when oh, do you get your appointments? What, what, what and uh, do, you, do you guys train together? Are you all at F45 what? together, or what are you guys, <laughs> what are you guys doing? You know, what, what's the, what's the, what's it like being a, a group of referees, and how do you guys, you know, figure it out, and what do they tell you? Yeah. Over here is, you know, they've got a real big um, professionalism about them the way that they run the yeah. training, the way that they run, um, you know, scrimmages and whatnot. So I've come from a little country, Auckland, to us doing our own thing, to something that's been put in place. So like a typical week, our appointments would be released on the Tuesday night. Uh, okay. Wednesday night, we're out as a group training. And when I say training, it's like running, it's sprinting, it's... Yeah. It's bad stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get, to, I'll get to love it soon. Apparently, uh, preseason is going to be hard, but that's okay. So normally, yeah, we'd go and do a uh, running session on the Wednesday. And then depending on where I travel, I could travel to Sydney on the Thursday night. Um, but typically, the Saturday, Sundays are right out for me because I'm, yep. I'm traveling for my refereeing. So, and then on the Monday, it's review. So we do yep. get reviewed. Uh, yep. We have match day coaches, post game coaches that help us, um, you know, strip the game down. What went yep. right, what we could do better for the next for the next game. So yeah, it's it's full on. You you never kind of switch off, or you yeah. try to you know try to give yourself breathing space, but you don't. You don't have the opportunity to do so because you're referring in professional spaces. It's NRLW. Mm. You're you're literally like another athlete in a way. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah. That, that schedule that schedule pretty much sounds to me like a. <laughs> you know what, what all the other NRL teams do, eh? So okay. you, you, you're full. Did, do, in the preseason, is there a bit more detail in terms of like video or the the new rules for the year, like kind of trying to stress yeah. certain things that as a, as a whole the referees need to work on or um, or do you kind of get all that topped up throughout the week? Uh, no, so that, yeah, we could, we could say like the new rules and guidelines are come out um, maybe at the beginning of the year. But in terms of preseason, it's more – physical it's more trying to gotcha. get the referee into into shape trying to make sure that the referee is ready to run in 30 degree heat you know yeah just gotcha. adapting to that uh to that next level of fitness is is going to be tough it's going to be so tough you know you come out of a session like absolutely flogged yeah yeah you're, you're dying so yeah now nah, preseason's more of a um physical you know um yep beat up you know to, yeah, to make yeah. sure that we're all ready for the next games for the next season mm. what's it like learning the names because i know they notice the nrl referees they're pretty good like with first names or you know like how have you been going oh, with your name your name calling uh, is it quite hard <laughs> yeah it's been hard for me uh again auckland we always use numbers uh depending okay, on yeah. if you use if you sorry if you reframe the most yeah. but yeah it's encouraged to know their names only because you get a better response and I yeah. fully understand that. You know, you're calling someone's number. They probably don't remember their number. You call them their names and then they'll respond. So you're yeah, getting to know the NRLW names have been um, a challenge, but I, yeah, eventually got there at the end. Yep, cool, cool. No, that's that's awesome. Uh, now, do you guys have your own – are you guys kind of like working cashies or you guys got your own union or how does it cut – are you guys under the RLPA or what, what's, what, what's the deal with the with the money? <laughs> Uh, so I'm I'm a part time part time contractor. Uh, gotcha. I have my full time job here working at Queensland Rugby League, um, and then wherever or whatever game I get, I get paid for that. But that's separate, and that's gotcha. with the NRL. So yeah, different different between different. Queensland and NRL. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Got that. What's it been like? I suppose it is a lot more professional over there. Um, you know, probably in New Zealand, you were the top dog, uh, and now you you know. You're working with Belinda Sharp, Casey Badger, um, whoever else is. What's it like working with those 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 ladies, and, and how have they kind of pushed you or motivated you, or or maybe yeah. told you off? I don't know what they like. Yeah. If they, uh, well, a bit of both. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but majority of it was um, the the World Cup. So the World Cup kind of got us together. There was only cool. three of us. So you had Belinda and Case at the World Cup, and then you had me. And I'm like, wow, wow. this is huge. 
I yeah. can just, you know, sit with them and be amongst it and just learn. And both of them are just so great. You know, they they will give so much time to you if you're willing to put in the work, you know. And I, yeah. I've had no issues with both of them. They, you know, they're, they're so good. They're so professional. Yeah. Um, this year they've done so well for themselves. Look, like, I think it was the last round. They refereed, both of them refereed in the NRL. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. That's smashing down doors. That's like breaking through glass ceilings to yeah. create other opportunities for the likes of, you know, myself or others that aspire to referee in the NRL. So they've been pioneers of the game. And yeah. my goal was obviously to follow, follow through, but, you know, just remain um, my authentic self. So, yeah, they've done so much for the sport and especially for women in rugby league. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I noticed them when they. I think one of them did the manly game, and it was. I really enjoyed it, and um, and and I know that's probably a pathway for yourself. Mm. Do you think that's kind of a, a long term thing, or do you think, hey, they might call me up next year, and I might be doing a game? No, I got to do mahi, bro. I've got, <laughs> I got to do yeah. the mahi. You gotcha, know, gotcha, I, gotcha. I just got here yesterday, and so <laughs> not those ones where you just rock up and then. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can't be like just rocking up. <laughs> nah. and go, oh, yeah. <laughs> Have a jam in the NRL. Um, but, yeah, just – well, the, the goal is to eventually get into the system. Um, yep. And it's the NRL. So I've refereed nine rounds of NRLW. That's something that I never expected, especially Absolutely. coming from New Zealand. My goodness. You know, and the yep. opportunity presented. So we did okay. Then get to the grand final. And then it's like in the future, what's my next goal? So it's, yeah, to eventually get into the NRL. And that's on the line. So. When, whenever cool. it presents, it will come. But for now, I'm just going to focus on, you know, getting fitter and getting better. Absolutely. Awesome. That's, that's a good, great goal to have. Um, just now, I want to talk about the referees. I, I really feel they, they get hard done by a lot in the public media space by fans. Uh, we had Ben Cummins just say his son, you know, didn't want his son to referee in the NRL. So I think his son's in the AFL. Um, mm. That says a lot to me when a referee is <laughs> encouraging their kids, don't follow dad. Uh, no. I want you to go somewhere else because it's potentially that bad. How bad is it, and and, and what what is the what what is the issue that you know needs to be fixed? I suppose in terms of to to get, yeah, to change the culture. That's that's the refs are getting a really hard, yeah, yeah treatment. Well, uh, yeah, I I don't even know how to explain it, but sometimes I have to um, ask my parents not to come to my games because yeah. they're sitting in the crowd. And they're hearing people just backlash, mm. and it breaks my heart because my father had to leave half time um, to one of my games that I had in, in New Zealand. He said I could just couldn't handle it, and it literally just it broke me because I'm like, all yeah. right, well, we're not, you're not going to come and watch my games ever again because of that. Um, yeah. And it's it's something that you know the, the culture might not change, but we need an awareness about it. Yep. You know, we're we're humans. We are not biased. We don't want, you know, for an example, we don't want the Warriors to lose. We, we don't want anyone <laughs> yeah. to lose. We don't, are you sure? No, 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 I'm just kidding. <laughs> we're not out there going, all right, sweet, we've got this team and we want yep. them to lose. Absolutely not. No way. Um, and it's just to understand, like, I don't know what the stats are, but we make so many decisions under fatigue. And sometimes I want to yep. turn around to that average Joe that's giving me, you know, flat going around and go, well, you want to do it. You want to come and do yep. it, you do it. But, you know, it's been it's been quite hard. And especially with me referring NRLW now, I've got to be very careful now. I've got to be yep. very careful like on my social media, on gotcha. how I, you know, present myself because it's the perception. But, yeah, it's it's tough. And so, yeah, I don't know how it's going to change. But, yeah. Yeah, it's just awareness. Like like everything, we can't change people. But as yeah. long as we make it more of an awareness thing, I think that's that's helpful. Yeah, I've learned. I've learned. It's actually funny. I've I've watched a lot of the Warriors games closely this year, and I've got to be honest. Uh, the casual. I think the problem with the casual fan is they don't see everything, so they go immediately to blaming the ref. Yeah. <laughs> but because I've been doing analysis stuff, I'm like, okay, now nah, we, we we just lost. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. enough. It wasn't. We it wasn't the ref. Lost because of yeah, we're not there yet. <laughs> we're, no. we're not. We're not there yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I, I yeah, I've grown to appreciate that. You know, the game isn't as what people think it is, and like you said. Yeah, I think it was like a couple thousand dis- refereeing decisions every game because yeah, you're doing it's a lot. Uh, you're doing the markers, you're doing the ten meters, um, yeah. you're doing we've that got six times. We've got people in our ears that you know yeah. the the average fan doesn't understand. We've got yeah. a lot of people in our ears 
Meanwhile, okay. yeah. we're trying to control the match. Now that's hard. So, yeah, that's something. You know, maybe the the fans won't know until now since I've you know said something. But yeah, there's yeah, just a lot so. of noise going on in the background that people can't see, and then we're trying to control it. There's a lot going on. What what's the comms like? How how many is it? Touch, both touches in your ear? Yeah, a bunker in so your ear. Got, <laughs> you do ever go like, I oh, shut up, I just need to focus oh, on my game. <laughs> I, honest, I'll be, yeah, it's just, you know, <laughs> from little New Zealand to no comms at all. Yeah, 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 <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. You know, the big stage is you've got your touchies, you've got the bunker, you've got in, uh, injury surveillance bunker, who is like the doctor. So oh, sometimes, right. yep. yeah, they're like, oh, such and such needs to come off. And you're like, oh, okay, so you've got to stop time, tackle four, someone needs to go off, you know, that. And then you've got your match day coach. So you've got a lot of people that are there helping you that people don't see and don't hear. Yep. But, yeah, yep. a lot, but it's good. <laughs> Tap, tackle counts, have you ever, um, is it quite difficult? You probably know tackle counts. It's just you've probably got it going through your head every day. You know? But is it, is it quite difficult to get a hang of? Or uh, it... No, it shouldn't. It shouldn't. It should be ingrained and it should yep. be a part of our process. So obviously yep. if you miss a tackle count, then something's gone wrong in that process. But yep. you've like again, you've got the team. You've got bunkers, you've got your match day coach, you've got your touchy. See, that's a good thing. You know, touchy's listening in. And then if you miss a tackle count, you've got people jumping in straight away to help. Oh, awesome. Okay, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. So that even so if you call six again, you're pretty you're, you mean you will naturally pick it up, but if they say, Hey, you missed one, you yeah. just add it on type of thing. Yeah. So if I'm oh. like tackle four, but it's tackle three, everyone's jumping in, no three. Oh, cool. Carry on. We're keeping Oh, up. that's awesome. Yeah. Guys, yeah that's, see, these are things we don't know. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. No, that, that really is. I appreciate that. Um, I wanted to jump in into the World Cup. Um, how, how was that experience? And, and there, was there much rule difference? I suppose now that you've done one season of NRLW, you will know the difference, obviously. Yep. Uh, yep. But yeah, what, what are some of those differences? And, and what was that experience like? Yeah. Oh, I can tell you the experience, the experience was phenomenal we go over there and we're there for six weeks and i love the footy i love the culture you know it's yep. very different in the northern side with our brothers yeah. and sisters but it, it was something that i really enjoyed uh the footy was oh, i don't even know how to explain it but it was mean like my first international men's line was the cook islands versus uh wales right and i'm like oh, whoa yeah. looking around i'm like this is huge and I just remember, I think it wasn't that game, but I had Tonga versus Wales. Oh, my goodness. I think just it just wasn't going right with me, for me. My flag went flying. It just went into the crowd. I didn't even know. <laughs> and then it wasn't until the winger from um, Tonga. He used to play for the Warriors. Um, you know him. Ugh. Who was it? Short guy, buffy guy. He's from the Warriors. He looks at me. I want to get and chewed out like, from the fans here. They're like, yeah, you, that's the thing of me. You, you oh. <laughs> I'm trying to think if he was the Tongan winger last year. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, not no. last year, but he's he's definitely he was definitely an ex uh, Warriors player. But okay. he was like, Miss, your flags in the in the crowd. I'm like, oh. So I look around, <laughs> and the crowd's like going crazy. They're like, no, yeah, touchy. The same game, I flipped, so I went flying, <laughs> and I was so fast. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to really put, no one's seen that. So, oh, man, I watched that. <laughs> no one's seen that. So, yeah, it was good. It was a really good experience. And then to kick off uh, with the women's game, I was the first one to, you know, break into that. So that was good. It was a big difference because yeah. in, in RLW, we don't have six agains. That's right. Uh, we don't have six agains, uh, but we did at the World Cup. So it's just oh, yeah, to... Sorry, my apologies. Yeah, I got confused because uh, do they have six agains at, at the in, uh, World Cup? Was that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Did you referee, I, I suppose, I, and I don't want to put you on the spot, but in terms of how difficult was it with the six again, especially countries like Brazil, Canada, a, a clear difference to, to Australia. Um, I mean, you, you could probably find an, an infringement on every play uh, sometimes, mm. but how difficult was that to manage some of those kind of, kind of games where the Australian New Zealand obviously are cut above, but yeah. Yeah. Well, it was a challenge because I refereed the – England versus uh, Brazil game. And I didn't know until I rocked up and done the toss that there was only one player in the Brazil team that could speak uh, 
full English. Oh, wow. Oh, my. Oh, okay. This is going to be a real challenge. <laughs> um, and it was. It was a yeah. very big challenge because of the language barrier. Yeah. Now, I'm grateful we had six <clears throat> again because then the, the play continued. Whereas if yeah. I was to maybe referee like an NRLW, would be there. Well, we'll try not all day. Yeah, yeah, but I I tried to hold back because I knew, you know, the language barrier. Uh, but they got better yeah. during the you know during the campaign. But yeah, it was hard. It was very hard, yep. and it it kind of it, I wasn't expecting. I was like, oh, how am I gonna adapt to this? I just had to ref. <laughs> I just had to ref yep. and then fix again. Um, but we had really good match day coaches that helped me go through it because they could feel that I was you know trying to find the rhythm, but it just wasn't working but yeah it was it was difficult that that game yeah 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 and it's understandable uh and you know we can only do the best of what you got um i suppose for an international space and even if you include the new zealand referees in that is is there a way we can get some more you know your example you had to move your family over you've had to find work you know is there a stage in which the nro may think about developing an academy where we can get some more New Zealand yeah. refs over and that type of thing, or was it kind of mm. do it on your own? Um, so we currently do have a a referee academy uh, back yep. at home. So Hi. we we do have uh, access to resources like coaches here in the NRL or New South Wales because uh, New Zealand runs on the New uh, New South Wales. Um, but so we 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 are equipped. We do have yep. the you know, resources to help us get to the level. But in terms of making the actual move to further your development and yeah. hopefully, you know, get you a better career, I'd say, uh, was on your own. you you got to do that on your own. Yeah, um, gotcha. I was very fortunate that I have really good friends here that helped me set up a job. Um, I found my own house. I've got no family here, so I did it myself. Wow. I moved over alone, mm -hmm. and so that was a struggle in itself. I tried yep. to ignore the emotions that came with, you know, being away from home, being away from Fano, being away from yeah. friends. I said, oh, I'll be fine. And it was like a big wall for me. I'm like, I'm putting this front up, but really, you know, it was hard for me, and it was difficult. Yep. So, yeah, to, to self-develop back at home was hard. Um being you know just i don't know that's just if you want to make it you're just gonna move i don't you know gotta move, just, yeah. yeah you're gonna yep. move. i can say it now because i'm here but yep. how serious are you obviously i'm very serious and so yes. i just made the move um but yeah that's that's how it goes back at home yeah gotcha gotcha now awesome and, um what part of brisbane because i used to live in brisbane are you in the west or you in the hamilton city? which is oh, oh hamilton yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Hamilton, which is not far from the airport, not far from Suncorp Stadium, which that's right, yeah, in the city. Um, it's yep. a really nice place, and so yeah, I've I've been really lucky, yeah, because houses over here are really expensive as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. good. Pad. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing at, at the Queensland Rugby League? Are you in the referee space, or you yeah. you doing some? Yeah, oh, so cool. I'm the officiating coordinator. So what I oh. do is I book flights, accommodation for our travelling referees during the um, season. And yep. you know, work with the association. So kind of like what I did back in New Zealand, but bigger, bigger scale. On, yeah, yeah, bigger yeah, scale, yeah, much bigger. No, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then maybe just you know to go into that now. What, what, where do you see yourself uh, in the future? Do you, do you see yourself continuing to work in refereeing space? Or I know a lot of people they start in one area of rugby league and then they mm -hmm. they go into another area. You're interested in the business side. You're interested in coaching. I don't know. What, what's what's your what's your interest? Hmm. Uh, well, the long-term goal for myself is, yep. for now I can see it, is um, to eventually get into the NRL, and that should be a full-time athlete. So not the Queensland Rugby League officiating coordinator and then the NRL. I literally just want to, you know, be like Belinda and Casey, so have a full-time contract. So that's, cool. yeah, that's a goal first. And then maybe when I retire, it's like to come back home to New Zealand and and create resources and you know yes. build build on something great to help others you know make the move here too awesome 
Um, that sounds like a good plan, giving back uh, to, mm. you know, back home. And, and But it goes as far as you possibly can. We want you to because I think that's the best way to be an example. Uh, I think, you know, hearing you pair now was one that always yeah. stood out to me, like a New Zealand referee. And I yeah. think now yourself, uh, we need more. We need more, um, especially when it comes to tests and internationals. <laughs> we get a bit carried away with the... Hey, where's no. the neutral ref? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then they see me and they're like, who's this girl? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so no, we're no, working on that. Awesome. I uh, appreciate your time. Um, I know you're, you're busy, very busy, um, and I, I do thank you for coming on the podcast. I think this has been eye-opening for people in a way that they can appreciate not only what you've done uh, from, you know, us Kiwis watching the NRL, uh, those involved in grassroots, but just from a personal view of someone that's taken their career as far as they can and making sacrifices i mean we all got to do it and especially you know you like yourself you've made a lot of sacrifice so i appreciate your time coming on here uh, today thank you very much yeah. oh thank you very <clears throat> much and up the she can't say it guys but she you know just wink uh, yeah we know like, we know the... what's on up the... <laughs> <laughs> The side eye. Now, thanks, Rochelle. Uh, that wraps up the Waza podcast for this week, guys. And we'll catch you uh, next week. Peace.